My name is Sahira, and I'm here to teach you the beautiful art of belly dance. Hey there, fabulous dancer. Today I am super excited because we are going to dive into the concept of creating choreography. For many of us dancers, after you've been dancing a certain amount of time, you start to have the craving to create your own piece, right? It's really fun to learn someone else's choreography, but there's something so special and so enticing about creating your own unique choreography using your ideas, your emotion, and your musical interpretation. Now, this is one of those things that is way easier said than done. And if you are like the majority of dancers out there, the first time you sit down to create your choreography, it doesn't really go as planned. Or perhaps you're one of the thousands of dancers who have just decided that they're not gonna make their own choreography because it's not worth the struggle. Well, I have good news for you. I'm here today to show you one particular method to approach creating choreography. I affectionately call it the spaghetti method, and you'll see shortly why. I'm gonna to talk to you about what it is, how it can be used, and it's the method that I used probably for the first 12 years of creating choreography. And then we're gonna talk about the problems and limitations that there are with this method. Most likely, if you've just sort of started dabbling in creating choreography, this is probably the method that you're using, whether or not you call it the spaghetti method or not. But in my last 22 years of belly dance, I have created over 100 choreographies for myself and for my students. And so I have a lot of spaghetti experience and I would like to share it with you today. So if you are a dancer who is interested in learning how to create their own unique and beautiful choreographies, join me here. Okay, so most likely if you have found a piece of music that you love and you just know that you have to dance to it, what you've done is you've put it on, you've stood in your practice space, and you've danced, right? You've just danced to see what happens. This is fantastic, right? You're just kind of listening to the music, you're seeing what comes out of the body, and you're playing with that concept. It's a little bit like throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks, hence the reason I call it the spaghetti method, right? This is pretty cool actually because it's going to draw to your unique patterns, your abilities, the movements that you love to do, and it's going to give you a running start and give you a place to begin from. In the end, when we create choreography to music, especially in this folkloric art form, if we're, you know, leaning towards the essence of the dance as it was created, it is typically improvisational in style, right? So by creating a choreography, we're kind of taking it in a different direction. But if you can improvise to that music and come up with your choreography partially from that point of view, you're going to be imbuing your choreography with a little bit of that spontaneous energy. If you can continue to make it look spontaneous, the 150th time that you've done it, right? So this spaghetti approach is a lot of fun because you really just get in there and explore. But there are some problems with it as well. A lot of dancers will find that after a while, you just kind of run up into a wall, right? You run up against a wall, you've gotten through the choreography once or maybe twice, or maybe there's one part in the, in the music that you're just like, I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm gonna do here. And you, it stops you in your tracks, right? So there are times where you'll need other methods to get you through your choreography and other methods in order to help you create a choreography that extends a little bit beyond what your muscle memory always does, right? But this is an excellent place to start, and especially if you're just getting into the choreographic process, I would encourage you to try the spaghetti method, right? And have some fun with it and see what happens. And in that vein, we are going to do that here together today, because we're not just gonna talk about it. Yeah, we're going to do it. Let me talk you through a little bit about how I approach the spaghetti method, and then we are going to do it as a little bit of a play shop right here. So I have a little piece of music here. It's just a tiny little one phrase from a fantastic piece called Belody and Crescendo by Armin Kusikian, and it's a really fun Belody piece. And when I heard it, I thought, oh, I must. I must choreograph this. Now, the spaghetti method is no longer the first method that I rely on when creating choreography, but it was the only method that I used for approximately 12 years until it stopped working for me, right? And so I still do use it as part of my choreographic process, and we're going to use it as the only method today just to really dive into it. So what's going to happen here is we're going to listen to the music a couple of times in case you don't know the music yet, right? The first thing you want to do anytime you create a choreography is listen to the music so much 
that you can sing it in your head in your sleep, right? For two reasons. You want to know the music well. It just makes coming up with that choreography a lot easier if you're not kind of guessing or unsure what happens in the music next. And number two, you want to make sure that you really love that music even after you've listened to it 524 times. Because if you start to hate it, choreographing to it is not going to be very much fun, right? So we're going to listen to the music together just a couple of times. I invite you to listen to it over and over and, you know, scroll back and put it on repeat if you would like. And then we're going to look at how would we like to approach this throwing spaghetti on the wall style. Are you ready? All right, here comes the music. All right, cool. Let's listen to it again, yeah? All right, how about one more time, just so that you have it in your ear, yeah? Here we go. All right, it's spaghetti time. It's kind of making me hungry just thinking about it. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this song on, this tiny little like 15 second segment, and we're gonna dance to it. I'm gonna dance to it spaghetti style, right? I'm just gonna do whatever comes out. Now, I can already hear some of you saying, but what if nothing comes out, right? Like this has totally happened to me where like the song comes on and I'm like, uh -huh. I have no idea what I want to do, right? I completely understand that and I've totally been there. If nothing comes out or you're like, I have no idea what movement to pick, I invite you just right now to pick one move. Be like, I'm going to do figure eights. Pick a move that you know you love. You can do with your hands tied behind your back. Feel free to use all the variations. Say, I'm going to do figure eights, right? I'm going to do figure eights, right? Really, when it gets down to it, it's not about choosing the right move. It's about doing the move that you choose in a way that reflects the music. So if you're panicking to figure out what move to do, feel free to pick one move to start there. Just keep dancing, right? Just keep moving. The goal here is to not end up frozen in your tracks like a deer in the headlight, right? So if you want to pick one movement and then try to make that movement fit the music, based on what you hear, right? Because in the end, I beg and plead of you, right? In this art form, the, we are the physical representation of the music. The music is what moves us to, to move and emote. And so I, I implore you to get out of your head, to get out of the, what should I do next? What move should I do? Oh, I already did that move. Oh, I can't think of anything. And just listen to the music. I know easier said than done, but this is a safe space and I can't even see you. So <laughs> go ahead and explain. Experiment. Feel free to pick one move or if you're comfortable just kind of, you know, noodling around with your spaghetti, you know, <laughs> spaghetti method, feel free to just noodle to your heart's content. I'm going to put the music on loop. I'm going to dance one and then the next time I'm going to let the music just run and you're going to dance on your own. I don't want you to be influenced by me every time. And then I'll jump in and I'll dance another. I'm going to aim to make my noodles a little bit different every time, but Here's the deal. Here's the thing with the spaghetti method. You are looking for the spaghetti that sticks to the wall, right? That's the whole idea, throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. We're throwing the spaghetti all over the place as we dance. And if you start to notice, oh, huh, I always do hip drops in that section. Write it down. It's probably a great place for hip drops. Or you notice, oh, in that section, I always want to do a turn. Write it down. It's probably a great place for a turn, right? So you're looking for those things that kind of keep repeating over and over through the different attempts that you take with the with this little combination, right? This is not about perfection. This is not about performance. I want you to get out there and get a little weird, right? Explore because one of the biggest limitations, and we'll talk about these a little bit more in a moment, 
with this method is you tend to end up with many choreographies that look the same because you're always relying on your muscle memory, which while it changes over time, you have your favorite moves, right? I have my favorite moves and they'll come out over and over and over. So in the spaghetti process, if we're gonna really maximize it and try to make it as productive as possible, I invite you to try to make each iteration of your attempt a little bit different and feel free to reach out of your comfort zone and just play. You never know what you might find. So ready or not, we're gonna do it. Here we go. How did that go, fabulous choreographer? I'm curious what you came up with. So now my next step as a choreographer is going to be to look at those iterations. Now we just did a few here in this moment. I invite you to play with it more in a real choreographic setting. I would probably do this like 20 times before I start to look for patterns. But in this short sort of a practice of it, I noticed that the time when I did like the hip drops, I really liked that. Yeah, and when I did the hip drops right on that downbeat, I'm gonna write it down, right? I'm gonna write it down. I'm gonna find those things that start to stick to the wall and I'm gonna make note of them in my choreography notes, right? As I start to map out my choreography and write it all down. And what you'll find after doing the spaghetti method is that you have several sections that are probably fairly filled out right? Fairly filled out. And then you can start to use other choreographic methods to fill in the parts that maybe didn't quite find something so quickly that fit the bill, right? Now, if you just went through this exercise and you're like, I have no idea what just, what just happened. I had nothing. I had nothing. Maybe this method is not the ideal method for you. The spaghetti method tends to work best if you're comfortable just kind of getting out there and dancing. I invite you to keep at it. I invite you to use the idea of just one move, picking that movement and utilizing it to express the music in the way that you hear it. Because whether or not you actually develop your choreography through this technique, you will become very adept at taking movements and texturizing them to fit the music, which is really what it's all about in the long run. There are only so many moves in belly dance. And in the end, what we end up doing is finding infinite variations on the theme in order to be able to accurately represent the music that we're listening to in that moment. 
So I want to know, how did the spaghetti method work for you? If you came up with something that you liked, I would love to see it. Take a quick video of you practicing and tag me on social media at the Hero Belly Dancer so that I can see you there and I can cheer you along in your choreographic journey. I am so excited to be able to share the dance floor with you. And I hope that this method helps you get a little bit of a jump start on choreographing your own fantastic and wonderful, unique choreography. I will see you on the dance floor soon. Hey guys, can you do me a quick favor and please like this video and hit the subscribe button. That way I can send you brand new belly dance content every single week. I would love to connect with you more. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, I invite you to check out my course, Secrets of the Confident Choreographer. You can find it at sahirabellydances.com slash choreographer. In it, you will find this and many, many more secrets that can help you create your own fabulous, unique, and wonderful choreography in a confident manner today.